Hey Simmers, welcome back to Simpit Academy. We continue with the front console looking at all the gauges today. So all the highlighted ones. This one it's just for show I didn't make it functional. So including the ones here. So the S beat angle of attack, the VVI and cabin pressure meter, basically these two, this one and this one. I've made them all the same so you just print, make create one and then print four times. Then this one is very easy and the util and PC a small panel and three circles like this. Then the SAI and altimeter both require one uh, encoder in one corner and then you just flip it over to the other side. Okay, this one will require a knob and a text pasted onto the knob. and also the markers underneath it so then this one the clock will have two knobs and two encoders and then the fuel quantity bingo here and a rotary switch here so starting with this one where all four gauges share the same panel square, circle, fillet, um, add holes for the corners and you're done. Okay, simple. Next, engine monitor display also simple. This one you select the four corners and choose chamfer and you get this. Next, utility panel just draw a circle, draw a shape and then join with an arc and trim whatever so the this one you basically pad this up here have another circle at the base all right so two circles one pad a little bit one pad more that's it and use it three times Okay, you can fill in the outer edges. Next, altimeter and SAI. Here we have this basically to cover the body of the encoder. Okay, you draw this shape and a circle. So pad it up. So you may have to make some adjustments to fill it up, okay? You can move it up or down. You pocket it first and then fill the edges again, okay, to cover the body. So it's going to be tight. You have to bend the legs of the encoder and it's going to be a tight fit for the clock you have a much thicker um, chamfer sorry fillet and create this tool like the previous one okay so just repeat so at the beginning, it might not be nice and then when you finally cover up again, it will look better. All right, all the dimensions are given here. So next we do the knob. It's a special knob. So you draw a circle and with a little notch first then 
I've showed this, I think, twice already, the polar array thing. So select this and click on this and you you repeat okay around this z axis. All right, then select a circle and pad it, a smaller circle and pad it, you'll get this trunk. And then at the bottom, draw this D shape to house the shaft of the encoder. And then you can draw two circles and do another trunk. Okay, before we look at this, so this is how it looks it looks like the original padded um, circle with the notch. You do your polar panel, polar array thing becomes like this. Then at the top trunk and at the bottom, D shape and then bottom trunk. Okay, so this is optional. If you don't want to do this, you can just use any knob as long as it fits either a circle or a D-shape to fit the encoder and you are good to go. All right, next, the SAI um, standby indicator, you, you need this marker things. Three ways to do it. Um, you can create many cubes, okay, have a, have, draw this shape and then create many cubes and just keep rotating them. It's quite a pain, all right? But this is possible. It's not very accurate, but it's so small, so it doesn't matter. Second method is you draw this quadrant shape and then the radius is shown here, okay? This is like 8.5 and 10. 11.2 the full one is 12 so you have this the middle 45 degrees and the 90 degrees all at a long longer um, line then all the shorter ones this one you 45 and in between you divide by 4 so it's like increments of 9 degrees okay all the way and you trim away everything and you get this, okay? Basically marking 0, 45, 90, and uh, four ticks, smaller ticks in between, All right? This is how you do it, second method. Now, the third method is going to be a bit tedious, but very accurate. And more importantly, you might want to use this method for other purposes there is this gauge maker that you can uh, download for free it's very versatile you can create any kind of stuff see this one is the the pitch ratio gauge this is the oxygen gauge uh, this one i combine the range is different this one from here to here and here to here is different so you, i created two and merge them but still you can you can increase, decrease the radius of the main ticks, the secondary ticks, and if you have even smaller one, tertiary ticks, and you can have arc, you know, um, you can start from negative, positive, determine how is how long is the arc, um, and your text, everything is very easy. So you don't want to save as SVG, you want to save as PNG first, okay? Then um, in, in Inkscape, you import the PNG and trace the bitmap, okay? And you want to, uh, from this drop down, go to Edge Detection and reduce it okay um to like point 0.1 so that it can detect the it, it will be sharper in resolution click update and you will get like this 
okay you get all this stuff here now it trace everything when you click on this icon you'll see all this okay and if you have all these numbers you just um, select and delete them then save as a SVG this time okay next we go into FreeCAD and we import this SVG then the way it gets imported each tick actually there are two rectangles a bigger one and a smaller one so see this is a smaller one inside then this is the outer one so we select all the smaller ones and we hit space to deselect them okay if not they become like um, like a border so we just want all those in blue so select all the ones in blue like this and then click here in draft workbench mode click this scale icon okay like this you want to reduce the scale the default one in the gauge maker you cannot determine the size so it's a bit too big so I determine that you are I need to scale it down to 0.17 if it's uniform everything will scale accordingly okay and now it shrinks okay so then select this one and click a sketch and you will create a sketch like this okay and then go to the sketch and create a shape like this obviously you have to trim away all this okay and leave the circle and then reverse pad down you need to give this tick sketch um, like a platform a base before you can pad them all right so they need to sit underneath something which is a quadrant base all right and before you pad it even when you select you you highlight all this you have to drag it into the body you'll be outside um, at the beginning so drag it in and pad then it becomes like this all right so let me show you it will be this path here okay the the sketch is like this and the original one is like this right we scale it down so we create a quadrant pad it underneath then we move this from the outside into the body then we pad and we will get this result okay so this is a, a bit tedious but very accurate next we want to make this knob so have a circle pad have a smaller circle with this shape okay and we're done so you can have another one inside um, to pad it up further so it doesn't go all the way so this is optional so now this one you can do the easy way again create text pad it and then start rotating them this one it's using inkscape to uh, draw a circle and then create a text and select both of them and click put on path and it starts to sit on the circle okay and you have to select it and drag it to the center okay click on this drag it to the center so that both the center of the text and the circle are concentric then you can rotate okay now you can click this and it will roll okay again center it and it will roll to the bottom here then you can move it up scale it down a bit 
okay and then the smaller circle again you create another text it cannot like it can roll like this but it cannot curve like this you have to put the text on top of the circle okay like this so move it up then you get this and create a third one then you can trace the bitmap okay this is the original you create a bitmap copy and trace it and you become like this so that we can import okay um you will also have the circle you disable the circles so you just want a text all right so select this create a sketch you'll be like this so as usual you need to give it a platform so draw a circle and um pat it down then we move the sketch into the body like the previous one and then we can pet okay this is the more tedious way uh, you can always rotate the text letter by letter as well so all these are optional so when done okay this is the marker this is the thing that we stick pull to catch if we stick to this knob then all these are just the three knobs you just repeat okay next we will look at the fuel quantity so this one the monitor shows the gauges i am not going to touch on helios when i'm done with everything at the end i will show you guys how to set up helios so The DCS BIOS for all this. So one thing about the clock, we can make the clock rotate. Okay, two pins to go one round, uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, stuff like that. But you just rotate, and in the game it will do the same, but it doesn't really do anything. Okay. According to their documentation, there's supposed to be some push button function, which is not implemented yet. All right, but this is fine. Rotate and this will move up and down and you push and the flag will come out and go in. And then this will adjust your altitude. So next we look at the fuel quantity. So a bingo knob and this rotary switch so this was the first version and i realized that this is wrong so because i'm putting this over a monitor it cannot be protruding down okay you'll be touching the monitor so i have to move everything up. okay so have this and basically we raise it twice right pad a smaller one pad again so that it becomes like this and then you chamfer the corners then move create this shape and move it up again and then make a pocket here okay then here create a hole at the bottom have a recess like this Have a locking hole like this so this one is deep okay much deeper than the usual one because the whole body of the rotary switch needs to fit in so you can see three layers okay all the way in so basically even the legs need to be just touching if it's protruding out then you want to bend the legs so that nothing no metal is scratching the monitor surface okay then here you pad it up and then make a hole okay like this 
and do a top-down recess to put the nut to hold the rotary um, encoder. Okay, you don't need um like um the whole body will go in, so you are locking from the top, not from the bottom, and you are not using um locking hole. The whole body is not moving it, so it's a tight fit. Okay, you can draw circles, thirty degrees as usual because we use the knurled height, which is easy to just fit the the knob. So the text is quite a tight fit. Choose a size that will fit everything. As usual, all these lines will not show because it's not three D. So this is by default uh, a potentiometer and which are these two sizes, right? This one is obviously too big. Even the smaller one is still very broad and I need something very narrow which only the encoder will fit here. This is a pretty narrow path. So I use encoder. So you have to to get a code, you have to switch in DCS BIOS to advanced view. Then you can find a code for the encoder. If not, you only see the uh, potentiometer code. Okay, and here are seven um, positions. In the beginning, this wasn't working, and I reported to the DCS BIOS GitHub team and they fix this along with the fire warning panel and some panels on the left console so basically nobody is actually testing uh, in such detail every panel every switch so whenever I find it I report it and um, they seem to have fixed them All right. Now we'll see all the gauges in action. 